Hello everybody. Um, what time is it now? It is just nine o'clock. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to our uh, morning prayer on this Friday morning. It's lovely to have you with me today. And, uh, and so I hope you've got your liturgy. I've got mine. I'm going to press this now. Um, so let's begin, shall we? Let's begin, does it begin as we seek to attend to the presence of God with us this morning. Shine on us, Lord, like the sun that lights up day. Chase away the dark and all the shadow of sin. May we wake eager to hear your word. As day follows night, may we be bathed in your glory. On our extract from Psalm 63. O oh God, I long for you from early morning. My whole being desires you. Like a dry, worn out and waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. Let me see you in the place of prayer. Let me see how glorious you are. Your constant love is better than life itself, so I will praise you. I will give thanks as long as I live. I will raise my hands to you in prayer. My soul will feast and be satisfied and I will sing glad songs of praise to you. Amen. Morning everyone. Morning Richard. Morning Sue. Morning Andrew. Morning Paul and Christine. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. Us. Me. <laughs> so, our readings this morning. Uh, today we continue on uh, um, uh, looking at Judges. And uh, so we have Old Testament readings from Judges 6, and our New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 14. So Old Testament reading uh, tells you the exploits of one of the greatest judges of Israel, Gideon. Uh, but a question for you as I begin to read the passage, uh, what made Gideon different? Uh, what had made him able or enabled him to fulfill the role that God was calling him to fulfill? What was the difference? So, our reading is from Judges 6, starting at verse 25, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. That night, the Lord said to Gideon, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's altar to Baal, and cut down the Asherah pole standing beside it. Then build an altar to the Lord your God here on this hilltop sanctuary, laying the stones carefully. Sacrifice the bull as a burnt offering on the altar, using as fuel the wood of the Asherah pole you cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did what the Lord commanded. But he did it at night, because he was afraid of the other members of his father's household and the people of the town. Early the next morning, as the people of the town began to stir, someone discovered that the altar of Baal had been broken down, and that the Asherah pole beside it had been cut down. In their place, a new altar had been built, and on it were the remains of the bull that had been sacrificed. The people said to each other, Who did this? And after asking around, and making a careful search, they learned that it was Gideon, the son of Joash. Bring out your son, the men of the town demanded as jo for, of Joash. He must die for destroying the altar of Baal and for cutting down the Asherah pole. But Joash shouted to the mob and conf that confronted him, Why are you defending Baal? Will you argue his case? Whoever pleads his case will be put to death by morning. If Baal truly is a god, let him defend himself and destroy the one who broke down his altar. From then on Gideon was called Jerobal, which means let Baal defend himself, because he broke down Baal's altar. Soon afterwards, the armies of Midian and Amalek and the people of the east formed an alliance against Israel and crossed the Jordan, camping in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with power. He blew a ram's horn as a call to arms, and the men of the clan of Abiezer came to him. 
He also sent messages throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun and Naphtali, summoning the warriors and all of them responded. Then Gideon said to God, If you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. And this is what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out a bowl full of water. Then Gideon got, said to God, but please don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. Let me use the fleece once more, sorry, let me use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. So that night, God did as Gideon asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wobbles are okay. We worship a God who seems to, uh, who is able to use the weak and the vulnerable. Uh, it's the proud he struggles with. Those who believe that they should always have their own way, that they are invulnerable and strong and never wobble. Good job he's not talking about us then, isn't he really? And this theme of God using those who are the weak and the vulnerable, God drawing close to those who declare their need of him, is really echoed in our New Testament reading. Our New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 14, verses 12 to 24. Then he turned to the host. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives and rich neighbours. For they, will be, for they will invite you back, and that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus explained, What a blessing will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. After the servant had done this, he, re he reported, there is still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full will be full for none of those i first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet this is the word of the lord thanks be to god isn't that so encouraging the god invites the poor and the vulnerable those who will accept him those who recognise their need, whereas those who declare that they don't need God or they only need God on very special occasions and to fulfil their agenda, well, they miss, seem to miss God altogether. Amen. So let's just take a moment to think about the day, shall we? So what's going to happen with you today? What are the landmarks? What are the people you're going to speak to? What situations are you excited about? And what are you worried about today? Just take a moment to bring these to your Heavenly Father who loves you.
And what about the people you're concerned about? The situations that worry you? Take a moment to bring those to mind and to give them to God. So let us pray. Lord, we offer you all we are, all we have, all we do, and all whom we shall meet this day, that you will be given the glory. We offer you our homes and work, our schools and leisure, and everyone in our community today. May all be done as if it is for you. We offer you those who lack and those who earn. May the wealth and work of this world be available to all and for the exploitation of none. Amen. And so our closing prayer is another a declaration of trust a declaration of our dependence upon God and our hope in God, that God will work through weak and fragile people like us, that God will shine through us as we intentionally love him and love our neighbours as we love ourselves. So, circle us, Lord, together. Keep strife without, keep peace within, keep fear without, keep hope within. Keep pride without, keep trust within, keep harm without, keep good within. May we walk in the hope of your kingdom. Fill us with your light and love. Be with us all through this day, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so may God bless you and encourage you. I just want to tell you a little bit about, um, you may have heard uh, on the news that uh, uh, the government have announced that churches can open from the 3rd of July. Um, my friends, it is deeply frustrating. We had a, I had a Zoom call with the diocese, <laughs> uh, uh, what exciting life I lead, um, last night. And uh, we were just all deeply frustrated because we've been given no guidance at all as to how we can do this. It's a bit like saying that you can go on a picnic, uh, but you can't bring food and drink and picnic rugs are banned. It was just really, um, so um, the diocese is saying, um, it may well be that the government have announced this, but we don't know anything yet. And uh, please don't think that the churches are going to be able to throw open their doors um, really anytime soon. Uh, so, um, so please would you join me on in morning prayer on Mondays and Fridays and uh, evening prayer on Wednesday. Uh, uh, the sermon is coming out. Uh, the sermon is uh, uh, for Sunday. Um, and also if you would like to come to our church building, we're open on uh, Sundays 10 till 12 and on Wednesdays 2 till 4 um, and watch this space. Uh, don't worry, as soon as we can find a way of having services commence, we will do it but that may not be as quick as we'd hoped. Uh, so blessings upon you, everyone. Be encouraged. Know that God is with you, especially if, like me, you feel pretty weak and vulnerable. God is there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>